Infection Prevention and Control Precautions for COVID-19 Part 3 Standard Precautions Define Universal Precautions Universal precautions are the techniques to be used with all patients who are considered to be possible to carriers of blood-borne diseases. Universal precautions are a set of infection control practices used to prevent transmission of diseases that can be acquired by contact with blood and body fluids. Between 1985 to 88, introduced universal precautions. In 1987, introduced body substance isolation. In 1996, introduced standard precautions. Standard precautions are a set of infection control practices used to prevent transmission of diseases that can be acquired by contact with blood, body fluids, non-intact skin and mucous membrane. Standard precaution practices should be followed by all personnel at all times on all patients admitted to the hospital regardless of their diagnosis and presumed infection status. Components of standard precautions include the following. Hand hygiene. Personal protective equipment. Respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette. Safe injection and infusion practices. Cleaning and disinfection. Environmental cleaning and housekeeping. Linen and laundry management. Proper patient placement. Disposal of hospital waste and training of healthcare provider. Please see the pictorial representations of key components of standard precautions. Hand hygiene. Most effective method for preventing transfer of infection between healthcare personnel and patients within the hospital. So hand hygiene is the most important measure for the prevention and control of COVID-19. The three types of hand washing are Social hand washing Hygienic hand washing And surgical hand washing For maximize the efficiency we need to perform hand washing and hand rub for following durations. Hand washing, 40 to 60 seconds. Hand rub, 20 to 30 seconds. While doing hand scrub. First wash of the day should take at least 5 minutes to complete. In between operations need 2 to 3 minutes of scrubbing. Use alcohol based hand rub. If hands are not visibly soiled and remember the duration is 20 to 30 seconds. Use soap and water. If hands are visibly soiled and duration is 40 to 60 seconds, stress on 5 moments of hand hygiene. This approach recommends healthcare workers to clean their hands. 5 moments of hand washing include Before touching a patient Before a clean or aseptic procedure after body fluid exposure risk. After touching a patient and. After touching patient surroundings. A chance to miss during hand washing. Look at the diagram. Violet color coded areas are frequently missed areas during hand washing. And a special care on red color coded area because they are most frequently missed. Now go through the steps of hand washing. Respiratory Hygiene and Cough Etiquette Cough etiquette are the series of actions to take if you are coughing or sneezing which are designed to reduce the spread of respiratory illness to others. Cover your mouth and nose with a tissue when coughing or sneezing. Use the nearest waste receptacle to dispose of the tissue after use. Perform hand hygiene for example hand washing with soap and water or alcohol based hand rub after having contact with respiratory secretions and contaminated objects or materials. Masking and separation of persons with respiratory symptoms. Healthcare facilities should ensure the availability of materials for adhering to respiratory hygiene or cough etiquette in waiting areas for patients and visitors. Provide conveniently located dispensers of alcohol-based hand rub. Where sinks are available, ensure that supplies for hand washing that is soap, disposable towels are consistently available. 
provide conveniently located dispensers of alcohol-based hand rub. Where sinks are available, ensure that supplies for hand washing that is soap, disposable towels, are consistently available. Visual alerts and proper signage for respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette. Follow droplet precautions. Social distancing. Social distancing. Avoid contact with someone who shows symptoms of possible COVID-19. Avoid non-essential travel and use of public transport. Avoid public places, crowd and large family get-togethers. Keep in touch with friends and relatives using phone, internet, and social media. Avoid routine visits to hospitals or labs. For minor problems, contact hospital over phone or use helpline number if possible. If you are regularly checking INR and adjusting blood thinning medicines, please contact the doctor over phone if possible and try and avoid a hospital visit as much as possible. Proper Patient Placement Designate or propose each area in the hospital into entry or exit, reception, triage area, OPDs, wards, emergency areas, special care zones, etc. A plan for patient flow in case of regular OPD, triage and emergency, etc. to be drawn. A flow plan and flow of patients in different scenarios may be displayed in the patient entry zone, reception, triage, etc. Plan how to triage all patients with epidemic symptoms without coming in contact with the general pool of patients. Plan for shifting out and discharge as per national or state guidelines. Rapid shift out of patients to their own home once they are stable enough. Respective primary health center medical officers should monitor further and feedback with treating centers should be taken if necessary. Isolation room. The patient should be placed in a well-ventilated single non-AC room. Windows should kept open during day times. The room should have an attached bathroom. If not, there should be a separate bathroom for use by the patient till isolation period is over. Toiletries, linen and utensils used by the patient should not be shared by other members. Alcohol-based hand rub or hand sanitizer should be made available at the patient bedside. An alcohol-based hand rub should be placed just in front of the isolation room and used by the caregivers who exit the room. There should be separate color-coded buckets in patient room for collecting waste generated from patient room. Isolation Ward Patient cohorting means placing patients infected with the same laboratory confirmed cases in a designated ward or area. Cohorting may be done as per their test positivity and gender status. Isolation ward should be well ventilated. Beds could be put with a spatial separation of at least 1 to 2 meter or 4 to 6 feet from one another. To create a 10-bed facility, a minimum space of 2,000 square feet area clearly segregated from other patient care areas is required. Overcrowding should avoided. Ensure that appropriate hand washing facilities and hand hygiene supplies are available. Avoid sharing of equipment, but if unavoidable, ensure that reusable equipment is appropriately disinfected between patients. Post signs on the door indicating that the space is an isolation area. Place appropriate waste bags in a bin. If possible, use a touch-free bin. Ensure that visitors consult the healthcare worker in charge before being allowed into the isolation areas. Keep a roster of all staff working in the isolation areas, for possible outbreak investigation and contact tracing. Remove all non-essential furniture and ensure that the remaining furniture is easy to clean, and does not conceal or retain dirt or moisture within or around it. Intensive care units. Depend on number of beds, number of ventilated beds and invasive monitoring intensive care units versus high dependency units. Effective steps and planning to control nosocomial infections. Ideally 6 to 8 beds. 
patient area should not be less than 100 square feet per patient greater than 125 square feet will be ideal. In addition there is optimum additional space for storage, nursing station. Those who need a resuscitation need to be transported to a resuscitation area, intubated with minimal droplet expulsion. Plan how to transport safely outside the ICU in case of need. Avoid all types of transport or avoid CT like investigation if possible, instead of this consider more point of care tests. Thank you for the listening. 